G'day. Whether you're new to crystal clear mathematics or whether you've seen my last two videos on finding roots, what I'm about to show you is something that I believe you should do if you want to become a good student of mathematics at high school. And that is, in my opinion, uh, all good students should at least once in their lives derive a square root of a number by hand without the aid of a calculator, the way it used to be done. Now, of course, I don't recommend that you do that all the time. I, of course, use a calculator. But it's a very worthwhile exercise to go through. So I'll demonstrate how it's done, and I encourage you to try it. We're going to find the square root of a number. And I'll show you the method first. We find an approximation. And I'll show you how that's done later. I've been calling it A in the previous videos. Uh, and we understand that A is an approximation, we wish to improve on it. So we're going to improve on it by adding what I call an adjustment factor. And I call it epsilon, a little a Greek letter that's often used for a small value. And for a square root, this is what epsilon looks like. It has this structure. It's n minus a squared, because a is a good estimate of the square root. And of course, we hope that is as close to zero as we can possibly get it. And we divide it by 2a. Uh, for those of you who know calculus, 2a is the derivative of a squared. And uh, if you want to find a, a different root, like a 17th root, you'd have a to the 17, and you have 17a to the 16 here. That's just for those who understand calculus. If you don't, don't worry. We're just going to find a square root at the moment, and this is how it's done. So, let's get started. We will find, we'll use a small number. Uh, let's go for 22. Square root of 22. Now, our first job is to find an estimate for the square root of 22. To do that, we need to understand what our, uh, to know our squares will. And you should know 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so on. Now, 3 squared, of course, is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared, 5 times 5, 25, and so forth. But the number we're, up, we're after lies between, 22, between 16 and 25. This is where the square root of 22 lies. Now, we would like to get a fair approximation for this. It's obviously between 4 and 5, and uh, our estimate is going to be 4 point something. Let's look at the gaps between these numbers, because once we understand the relationship here, we can get some idea of the relationship here. Even though it's not strictly proportional and linear, it's a fairly good approximation. Now, the gap between 22 and 25 is 3, and the gap between 16 and 22 is 6. And 6 and 3 is 9, that's very close to 10. So, 22 is 6 out of 9, or 2 thirds of the way along, from 16 to 25, so we're assuming that the root square root of 22 is about two-thirds of the way along from 4 to 5. Now, two-thirds two is 0.67, or 0.6 through Peter. And uh, since this is very rough, I'm going to make an assessment, or a judgment, that this is about 4.6. Now, it could be a bit closer to 4.6 or 4.7, but uh, probably a little bit better to err on the low side when you're making this guess. So we're going to say that A, this is our value of A, is about 4.6. So here we go, 4.6. Now at this stage, you can get your calculators out and multiply 4.6 by 4.6 and see how close we've got. It should be up there somewhere, but it won't be quite, won't be exactly 22. And we're going to add an adjustment factor to improve on this. Now, we're going to find it using this method. I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to need this area of the board shortly. 
that's awful, but it'll just have to do for the moment. Let's find the adjustment factor. It's approximately our number, 22, minus our approximation, 4.6 squared, over 2 times the 4.6. Now you can see that this is a little, well, a little bit laborious. Let's square 4.6. There are some algorithms around to calculate perfect squares fairly quickly. Um, I'm just going to rely on good old fashioned long multiplication. 6 6 is a 36, carry the 3. 6 4 is a 4 6 is a 24, and 3 is 27. Start in the next column. 4 6 is a 24, and 4 4 is a 16, and 2 more is 18. 6 1 1 2. And we've got one, two decimal places, so we need two in the answer. Well, it was fairly close to 22. If you did it on your calculator, that's what you should have got. So we're getting 22 minus 21.16 divided by 2 times, I'll leave it in parentheses, 4.6. Well, let's calculate this. 22 minus 21.16 is 0 0.84 divided by 2 times 4.6. Now, I'm going to have to simplify this fraction and divide to get a decimal. So I want to make this as simple as I can. I'm going to divide this 2 into the top. Get 0 0.42 over 4.6. I'm rapidly running out of space. I think we might be able to squeeze this on. Uh, I notice both these are even, so I'm going to divide by 2. Now I'm going to work across the page now. Now, I don't like dividing by decimals, so I'm going to make this a whole number by multiplying it by 10, which means I must multiply the top by 10 as well. The bottom becomes 23. Decimal jumps over 1, and this one, the decimal jumps over 1, I get 2.1. Now, I'm much more prepared to do this division than any of these ones. So let's perform it. Uh, yes, I will get rid of that. And we perform this division. 23 into 2.1. And I want a decimal answer, so I'm going to add some zeros and see what happens. 23 into 2 does not go. 23 into 21 does not go. But 23 into 210 would go 9 times. I know that because it went very close to going in the last time. 9 times 23. 9 threes are 27, carry the 2. 9 twos are 18 and 2 more is 20. That's extraordinarily close. Very, very close indeed. Difference is only 3. Bring down the 0 and you can see 23 into 30 goes 1 and a bit more and we would continue on. Dot, dot, dot. So this is our approximation. Epsilon. 0 0.09 etc. And again... If you're going to round, it's worth rounding down. So I'm going to say it's approximately 0 0.09. So our conclusion will be, this is a problem now. I like to work down a page, but the whiteboard is just a little bit too small. I think I'll rub this off and clean it in order to write our conclusion. So please bear with me, and we'll summarise all this very quickly soon. There we go, that's considerably better. And we'll pretend that we've got a portion of the page here and we say, therefore, our second approximation is our first approximation plus the adjustment 
which was 4.6 plus an adjustment of 0 0.09 so we're going to write 4.69 that's our second approximation now if I wanted to approximate again I would start off by putting 4.69 in here and working out the epsilon for it. So there'd be a 4.69 here and a 4.69 here. The calculations would get worse, but you'll get a, an even more accurate figure. Now I'm a bit curious to see how much of an improvement we've made. Uh, 4.6 squared turned out to be 21.16, which was getting fairly close. Bear with me, I'll get my glasses and the calculator. Here we go. And uh, I'm going to do work out 4.69 squared. 4.69 squared. Oh wow, that's quite good. Here's our check. Is 4.69 squared is 21. 0.9961 so it's actually very very close to 22 as we were hoping another way of checking this out would be to say this what is the square root of 22 really uh, according to the calculator and it really is 4.69041576 you can see that We've already got the first three digits quite uh, well established. It's a good little approximation method. I recommend that you just choose some number, not a big one, something perhaps under 20 or under 30, and uh, see if you can find the square root of it to one or two decimal places without using your calculator, using this method. And uh, I look forward to hearing your comments and your feedback. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like the video and leave a comment if you wish. And please subscribe so you can find out about future videos. Thank you very much for watching.